Okay, students, the next question for pensions that we're looking at is another OTQ, which is uh, which is a question which was tested in December 20, 2008 in ACCA. So it has been updated. So again, uh, the usual way, we're going to look at the requirements and then we, we'll be coming back. So we have certain uh, statements, which two of the following statements about relevant earnings are correct. So basically, what are relevant earnings? Basically, the relevant earnings are the amounts that you earn, basically your non-saving income, so your salary uh, and other things. So these are regarded as relevant earnings. If you have those earnings, only then you can make a contribution in a pension scheme. But if, if an individual has no relevant earnings, then there is a fixed amount that that individual can invest in a pension. And that amount is 3,600, which is being talked about in the, in the first statement here, okay? So I'm going to read this first statement. Individuals can always make gross pension contribution of 3,600. So basically, if an individual has no earnings, he can still make a contribution of 3,600, okay? So I hope this is clear, that this statement is correct. Even if they do not have any relevant earnings. So the relevant earnings would be, Basically, you're doing some business, you have some employment. So, but if someone has no such thing or you have a furnished holiday letting business, you have incomes from that. So if, if you do not have any of that, you can still make a contribution of 3,600, okay? So this first statement is correct. We're looking for two, okay? So relevant earnings relate both to contribution to personal pension scheme and to the occupational pension schemes. This is correct, that whenever we're looking at the relevant earnings, the you can make a contribution into a personal pension scheme and into the occupational pension scheme, okay? So this these two statements are correct. Basically, in the start of the session, I told you that an individual can make a contribution in personal pension and in the occupational pension, which is managed by the employers. And the personal pension is actually managed by a, a financial institution, okay? So uh, the relevant earnings are relate both to these contributions. This, these two statements are correct. Let's see what is wrong with these two statements because since we have selected the first two, the last two cannot be correct, okay? If an individual makes pension contributions less than relevant earnings in a tax year, the excess can be carried forward uh for the three years and used to cover pension contributions so this is this is not about the earnings it is about the allowance every year the allowance is forty thousand. <clears throat> so basically this statement is not about earnings it is about allowance if an individual makes pension contribution less than the relevant earnings okay it does not matter we do not look at the relevant earnings we actually look at the allowance amount which is forty thousand which we looked at and discussed in the previous question, that uh, you have a you have allowance of 40,000 every year. And if you have not utilized it completely, you can carry it forward. But this in this question, they are wrongly talking about the relevant earnings. So this statement is wrong. Relevant earnings do not include income from furnished holiday letting. This is exactly what I said, that furnished holiday letting, your employment income, uh, and your trading income are all relevant earnings. Okay, so this statement is also not correct. They say that furnished holiday letting does not include as relevant earnings. So these last two statements are not correct. <laughs> so we have we have covered this question without looking at the information because it has got nothing to do with the information of the question. So I am moving on to the next one. This is another one which we can cover without looking at the information of the question. Identify by clicking on the relevant boxes in the table below whether each of the following statements about the annual allowance is true or false. So again, the, the annual allowance comes in the 40,000 annual allowance. So the employer contribution do not count towards the annual allowance. So this statement is false. You remember in the case of Rosie, we did the previous question, the the contribution was made by Rosie, which was 26,000, and the contribution made by the employer was 10,000. So the total contribution was 
36,000, okay? So uh, that contribution by the employer also counted towards the annual allowance. So they are saying that it does not count. So this statement is false, okay? So the first statement is not correct. The annual allowance can be carried forward for three years to the extent that it is unused in the tax year. So this statement is correct. So we have the annual allowance for the current year and we have the annual allowance for the previous three tax years. Okay, so this statement is true. Okay. The, the third statement, the annual allowance is available even if the individual is not a member of a pension scheme. So basically, the, the annual allowance is only there if you are a member of a pension scheme in a tax year. And so it can be carried forward. So this says, so this is, this statement is false because it says the annual allowance is available even if the individual is not a member. So to have the annual allowance, you have to be a member of the pension scheme. So this statement is false. So the first statement was false. The second was true. And the third statement is also false because you have to be a member of a pension scheme to get the annual allowance, okay, for the previous three years. If in any specific year you're not the member, then for that specific year, you will not get the annual allowance, okay? Yeah. So the last statement that we have, if tax relievable pension contributions exceed annual allowance, there's a charge to income tax. So clearly, uh, basically, if we make pension contribution, which are more than the annual allowance, then we have to pay extra tax charge. So this is what happened in case of Rosie. We, Rosie was a higher rate taxpayer and she had to pay a tax of 45% on any amount that she contributed into the scheme that exceeded the annual allowance. Okay. So this statement is true. So <clears throat> we see that uh, the second statement was true and the last was true, okay? So I hope uh, this has given you good understanding of the annual allowance and uh, what is the, what about the relevant earnings? <laughs> these were two really good questions that would help you understand these things. So I hope I can move on now. Okay, that's good. that's good. So we have the next one, which is the... <coughs> Very good. So what is ANS income tax liability for the tax year 22-23? So we have to calculate the tax liability. Uh, the question is asking to calculate the tax liability because there is going to be an impact of the uh, contribution to the scheme. Whenever you make a contribution, your basic band ex extends, okay? So we will need to look at as circumstances. Then the next question is about Basile's annual allowance charge for the tax year 22-23. So here, Basile must be making uh, basically more than the annual allowance and there will be a charge, okay? So what is Basile's annual allowance charge? Uh, for the tax year 22 23. So we have the case of Anne and Basile. And let's look at the third one. What is Shoe's tax relief on her pension contribution for the tax year 22 23? So we need to have these three questions. And the information is here. So uh, let's take this information to the, to the Excel sheet.
Okay, so we have the information here. So let's look at first of all the Anne's circumstances. So what is going on here? Anne is self-employed. Her taxable income for the tax year 22-23 was 76,000, which was all trading income. So one thing that the taxable income for this year is 76,000, and that is all trading income, which is relevant earnings for the uh, contribution into the pension scheme and made contribution of 49,000. So you, we all know that the maximum contribution or the annual allowance is only 40,000. So since Anne is making uh, the contribution more than 40,000, then there must be some of the uh, annual allowance coming from the previous three years, okay? So let's see what are the situation, what is the circumstances uh, relating to Anne why Anne is making a contribution of 49,000. Gross into personal pension scheme between September 22 and March 23. This was the second year that she had been a member of pension scheme and she had an unused annual allowance of 20,000. So clearly this is the second year and it means that Anne had an annual allowance of 40,000 for the current year and the allowance of the previous year, which is another 20,000. So the total contribution that Anne can make is 60,000. However, Anne is only making a contribution of 49,000, okay? So that's fine. Now the we know that the contribution is 49,000. And if you make a contribution of 49,000, that is actually going to extend your basic band by 49,000, okay? So your income, Anne's income is 76,000. So we have to calculate the the tax liability for, for Anne here. Okay, so we can say that the, the, the taxable income, which is given in the question is, is 76,000 here. And we have this, uh, the basic band. Uh, basic band is 37,700. Plus, there is this uh, contribution of 49,000. So the total amount is actually the basic band is, let's sum this up, that is 37,700 plus the 49,000. So this, is, this amount is 86,700, okay? So it means that uh, Anne will be paying uh, the 20% rate, the basic band rate, on all the income, which is 76,000. So we can have the, we can have the tax liability here. So the tax liability is going to be 76,000 multiplied by 20%. So that is going to be 76,000 into 20%. It's only 15,200, okay? And I will, I will just write a note here. And can make a contribution contribution in the personal pension scheme of 49,000 as uh, there is annual allowance of 40,000 for the current tax year and 20,000 available from the previous previous year the total annual allowance available is 60000 so i think this is uh, this clarifies the whole thing okay these are yes uh, do, what is the question Dave, I'll take off the personal allowance. Of uh, just a second. Munifa, can you be a bit loud? I, I can't speak properly. Yes. Sorry. Do you not take off the personal allowance of 12, 5, 7, yes. 0? Uh, you see, I read it here. Her taxable income, The when you deduct the personal allowance, then you arrive at the taxable income. So that's why they, they have already deducted the personal allowance they have given us the taxable income, which is after the personal loan. I've also mentioned it here, the taxable income. 
So I can just write it here. Taxable income is after the personal accounts. Okay. I hope it makes sense now. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I am going to take the solution in front of the question where we had to do the calculation for and here. Okay. So this is this is fine. So now we look at uh, Basile's circumstances. What is going on with Basile? What is the annual allowance charge for Basile? So Basile must have made a contribution more than what is the annual allowance. Okay, so let's see. What is the situation with Basile? Basile is employed during the tax year 22-23. Basile had taxable income of 250,000. So I told you that the maximum income that can that a person can have is 240000 so if a, if an individual has this income of more than 240 so the the annual allowance starts reducing by half the amount okay so the so we can say the annual allowance annual allowance for the seed like for all the tax pay the annual allowance is 40000 but uh, it will be reduced. It will be reduced by anything which is above 240,000. We divide that by two. Okay, so this is the treatment. So 250,000 minus 240 is 10,000. And uh, 10,000 divided by 2,000 is equal to 5,000. So, so we are going to have this adjustment here. <coughs> That the total allowance available for Basile is 40. But since there is this, uh, the earnings are more than 240, so it will start reducing. So for every, uh, for every two pounds above 240, it will be reduced by one pound. So it is actually more than 10,000 pounds. So we divide it by two. So the answer is 5,000. So the answer is 35,000. Okay, let's see what are the but are other circumstances. So, so it means that Basile can make a contribution of 35,000. However, Basile made contribution of 15,000. So Basile is making excess contribution. So we need to, we need to find the excess contribution for Basile, which is, which is 50,000 less the 35,000. So the excess contribution is uh, 15,000 okay? because we just calculated that Basil can make a contribution of 35. However, Basil is contributing 50. So the excess amount is 15,000. Okay, let's see what, what are the other issues here. Okay, so uh, okay, this was the first year that he had been a member of a pension scheme. In future, uh, his employer may contribute to Basile's uh, pension, personal pension scheme. So right now, it's the only contribution which Basile is making, and this is the first year uh, Basile is uh, the member. So no annual allowance is coming forward from the previous years. Okay, so <clears throat> we can see that Basile is what Basile is a is the additional rate taxpayer. Because uh, Basile's income, Basile's employment income is 2 lakh 40, 2 lakh 50,000. So Basile's uh, excess contribution with, uh, will actually be uh, taxed at 45%, which is the highest rate. Okay. <clears throat> I hope this is clear. And uh, we. So let's, let's see. Let's see what is the situation here. So let me just calculate the value here for you. So the the requirement, let's go back to the requirement again. What is Basile's annual allowance charge? Because Basile is making this contribution, so there is this annual allowance charge. So let's calculate the value here. The annual allowance charge is 15,000 multiplied by 45%. So that is going to give us the answer. 
So that is six seven five zero. Okay. So you see, this is this is good practice because this information is coming uh, from the. It is related to the previous question as well. So this is these are the circumstances of Basin. Okay. So I hope this is clear. So now we are we are only left with to deal with slow uh, or clo whatever it is. So I hope these two are clear. The and and Basin. Okay. So I think this is this is good in front of Basit, this whole working. I could take it down, but I think this is good because it is in front of Basil's information. Okay. Now let's look at close uh, circumstances and we we will look at the requirement first and then come back. What is close tax relief on her pension contribution for the tax year 22-23? So Clo is making a contribution here. So what are the what are the what is the tax relief? What is the tax relief that uh, he is going to get? So let's see the circumstances. Let's see the situation. So Clo lets out an unfurnished property for the tax year twenty two twenty three. So whenever you have unfurnished property, it is not relevant earnings. Okay, so it is not a relevant earning for the uh, pensions. For the tax year 22-23, her taxable income was 16,630, which was all property business income. So it had to be furnished holiday letting. It's a simple property. So simple property income does not count as earnings. Okay. So Clo made a contribution of 8,200. So we looked at that if you have no relevant earnings, then you can make a contribution of only 3,600. But Clo is making a contribution of 8200 into a personal pension scheme during the tax year 22-23. So one thing that Clo can only make a contribution of 3600 because Clo does not have any relevant earnings. However, Clo is making a contribution of 8200. This was the first year that she had been a member of a pension scheme. Clo does not have any interest payable on her buy to let a property. So there is no question of any interest that is payable. So it means that uh, we we need to calculate the benefit. So let's let's do the working here. Because if uh, so the the benefit of contributing in a in a pension in a pension scheme is the extension is the extension extension of the basic band okay so uh 3600 the basic band the basic band would be extended by 3600 and if the basic band is extended by 3600 the the 20% rate would be applied to uh, 3600 and that would be the tax benefit okay so let's calculate the value here if we have this uh, 3600 multiply by 20 percent that is 720 okay so the answer here is 720. so i hope you understand the requirement of the question that is option d that we needed to consider how much uh clo could contribute clo could only contribute 3600 and if this contribution is made the the benefit of this contribution would actually be extension of the basic plan and 20 percent rate would be applied uh, on the extended amount. So that would be uh, basically a tax benefit of 720. Okay. So this is the tax relief. So I hope this is clear. So we have done another OTQ regarding that.
Okay, so I think we can we can move on. Hi. That's very good. So we're done with chapter uh, the question practice for chapter five. So let's move on to chapter six.